Ultra Chill. Hi guys, welcome to episode two of Ultra Chill. I wanted to thank Jorg from AMD for being such an interesting, engaged guest. And thanks to Nicholas and David for coming on again and having such a frank, open discussion. I love this stuff. I'm really happy that you guys are on board. And I wanted to remind you to follow, like, subscribe. You know the drill. Down below, that's where it goes. So let's get into it. I'd love to start by asking a little bit about your history at AMD. First of all, thank you very much um, for the invite. It's a great pleasure um, to speak uh, with you and your community, of course. So um, my name is Jörg Roskowitz. I'm with AMD since now 15 years. And um, so I started my career um, at um, Fujitsu Siemens, um, being responsible for the high-end notebook systems, then joined to AMD, um, working in the field application area. Um, taking over um, the team. And since um, 2015, um, starting to investigate um, into blockchain business. And um, since three years, um, I'm responsible for the blockchain business unit within AMD. And um, we are working on different tasks um, to work with our partners as well as customers um, to seek um, for solutions. And this will be mainly within the um, gaming area, enterprise area, um, as well as in the consortium area, talking about um, the next standards, um, having um, um, distributed and um, common sense um, for the blockchain API. And how did you get involved with blockchain technology? It was a kind of a, let's say, submarine project, I, I would really say it. So um, everything starts really with the mining first, right, in 2015, um, sure. where we worked um, with um, the first um, people um, speaking about um, mining um, to have um, a data center facility where you are using graphics cards um, for the algorithm um, to get um, the tokens. Um, to grow the network and um, to secure the network in that regards. So, um, and after getting this established, um, we, we thought about, okay, that's basically um, a workload um, which will be hosted in a data center and um, they need to be much more than only um, crypto compute mining. And um, this is um, all as it started. So we investigated and uh, becoming a partner from the EEA, the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, a couple of years back, um, talking about particularly um, about um, security, because as you know, AMD is a hardware manufacturer and blockchain is essentially um, a piece of software, right? And um, we were sitting together thinking about, okay, so how can we um, improve the algorithm? How can we help the community? How can we help um, to accelerate this architecture as well as making it even more um, secure? Specifically, once we're talking about transactions. So we all know that um, the blockchain ecosystem, the database is a secure manner, but once you're talking with the outer world having transactions, then the unnecessarity comes into the place. And um, we need to make sure that those transactions um, will be um, secured in that matter. So before we really kind of delve into a lot of the interesting things that you just kind of like poked around at right there, uh, I wanted to get started with a little bit of Q&A from our community. So the first question that we'd like to address, and I think David, this one's for you, is what programming language might be most compatible with Ultra? So the question here is about the programming language, but I think it's a much larger question in general about how Ultra integrates with different applications and how other applications integrate into Ultra. Ultra is actually a really broad subject. So there's the app ecosystem, uh, there's the blockchain, um, there's the NFTs. And so there's really many different things you could develop. And then of course there's the games, right? When it comes to games, obviously you can program anything with whatever programming language you want. Um, if you use our SDK um, to enhance your game with NFTs or with our platform, platform functionalities like achievements, uh, leaderboards, matchmaking, lobby making, you know, all of these uh, fancy things, mm -hmm. you're going to have actually the choice 
Um, we our SDK comes in multiple flavors, so C Sharp, C plus um, plus, JavaScript, and then we have a flavor um, for Unreal Engine and Unity 3D. So C plus plus and C Sharp, but kind of like already prepackaged. So that's for um, functionality in the game. Now our SDK has also been um, built to not just be usable by games, but also by apps. Uh, I'm thinking of mobile apps, so Android, iOS, and um, of web apps. Uh, so, for example, um, you know, a web service that would display, you know, your NFT inventory and so on. And so this is done then in um, uh, JavaScript. And then um, when it comes to the programming language for the SDK, you're going to um, program this in C++. Um, and uh, when you're going to create um, um, NFTs, we, are, we actually created like an interface for you to, to communicate with our, what we call a, um, a, a token factory dispenser. Um, so which is a kind of like an entity as part of our blockchain infrastructure that can set up um, you know, token factories that then are capable of generating a, a one type of NFT. Um, and so interacting and setting up these token factories is done then in some kind of, um, well, it's a JSON essentially. So you're going to interact um, with the blockchain in, in JSON and with your blockchain client. So that kind of covers, um, you know, all the different aspects of our platform and the different uh, programming languages. Have we talked about token factories publicly? So I think we mentioned this concept um, maybe at one point. Um, but the idea is that when you create a NFT, you, typically you have more than one unit. And they're typically the same, except they have at least a serial number that's different. So each NFT is, you know, uh, unique and um, potentially they can have uh, unique data. You know, you can think about like uh, if you have a game with, uh, with little monsters and each monster has different stats and this would be unique, uh, but they would all come out of the same token factory. And this allow, um, this structure allow us to basically reduce the development time and facilitate the management of different types of tokens uh, when you when you develop them. It's super interesting stuff, man. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> All right. So I think the next question that I'd like to tackle is for Jorg. It says, hi, Jorg. I am assuming AMD is approached to collaborate relatively frequently by projects within the blockchain space. What makes Ultra an ideal partner for AMD moving forward? That's a very good question. Very, thank you very much. So given to the fact that we're talking about um, a new technology, which is um, just establishing um, in the market. So um, um, there are various um, um, partners in various fields um, we, we want to play in and we are partnering in. So Ultra is a perfect partner in the gaming industry because um, I'm a big fan of what blockchain can support in the gaming area. Just speaking about tokenizing in-game assets, um, reselling gaming um, licensings, um, um, dealing um, between different players and assets. So um, I think this will give the community a complete new ecosystem they can play with. Yeah, right. And maybe even doing money um, in the next um, couple of stages um, of development where you can say, OK, playing games is not nothing useless, as maybe some parents uh, will say to the kids. Oh, my God, you are wasting so much time. And um, now the kids can tell, no, I'm not wasting time. I'm doing money and um, I can even um, generate more value for the community, right? In working on new projects, in working on new updates. And um, I think we can see already um, the first um, uh, partners, the first concepts um, in the market, like with NFTs, as you mentioned, David, um, where um, specific games tokenizing already parts um, of, of cars, for example, getting them branded, giving them um, specific features, the people through their wallet can exchange. And the beauty of all those things 
um, you can um, set it on a smart contract where you are defining, okay, all the partners involved in that ecosystem will get a piece of the cake. And this is fascinating. And um, the even more fascinating part is really the security portion. So we all know that um, specific in the esports um, gaming area that the people try always to cheat, um, try to copy things and then to sell it in the gray market. So with that piece of technology, what Altra is including into their platform, you can really eliminate um, this and um, you can make um, those assets transaction games more secure and more valuable um, for the overall um, community. I also um, like the, you know, what's happening right now, we're, we're hearing um, metaverse, 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 you know, this is it, like, it's kind of starting to resonate across the game industry. I think uh, NFT will be um, like um, one of the main pillars on which metaverse will, will exist and will transcend like the digital world and, and become closer to the physical world. I, I can't agree more. I think um, the NFT um, stuff and API, this is exactly um, the point the world was waiting for, having a kind of a standard they can rely on, working together, defining a kind, yeah, as a kind of a standard yeah. um, um, to get this um, adopted into various fields. So. Um, I think it, it is, was quite interesting. So it, it started almost um, 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 through modern art um, and artists um, for, for music records. Now it's entering the gaming um, um, scene. And I think it will really become a standard in, in various areas where you tokenize really everything. It's not only like digital assets, you can also tokenize physical assets, right? If you want to get them tracked and all these kind of things, for example. So um, it's not only a pure digital um, matter, which is important. Yeah, I want to I wanna live in a world where you can play video games, earn a lot of money and buy a tokenized physical asset like a house or a car as part of the profits from the gaming that you do because it's fun. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> So the last question that we want to tackle today is, can you speak further on the synergy that Ultra Software has with AMD hardware, specifically on the hardware level? Does Ultra have access to any anything CPU or GPU related designed specifically for Ultra? So, um, yeah, um, we are working on, on different angles. So um, as we know, um, we're talking about transactions to make the network um, secure. And um, having those transactions, um, we were sitting together, OK, how can we make this possible? And um, as you know, on our hardware, it doesn't matter if it's um, CPU side as well as GPU side, we have a security portion, which we call PSP, Platform Security Processor. And um, this is an ARM risk processor, which is embedded into every SOC um, on our hardware, right? So um, it's, it's part of our chiplet um, architecture. So um, chiplet is, is very easy to explain. So I always explain it as a kind of as a, a legal subsystem. So you have the base plate and you have the different bricks, which you can stick together. And through the interconnect, it is working and it's becoming live. And the beauty of that, you can tailor it specific to customer needs. So you can make um, a server unit, which has more cores. You can do um, a console unit where you have maybe more graphics power. Um, you can put something into the embedded where security is um, the most important part or um, a network um, infrastructure. So you can put everything together and uh, make um, a specific um, solution out of that. So this is something we are working together on the security side. The second point is, and this is what we all know, we are currently facing issues that um, everybody is taking or is becoming a bigger um, a carbon um, footprint. So um, what we are doing with our technology is um, improving um, those carbon footprint um, in regards to having um, the latest and greatest um, architecture like um, seven nanometer FinFET technology, which will reduce um, the power consumption. We will have um, algorithms um, in our um, architecture, which will improve um, the scalability, the latency, as well as um, the TDP. Um, 
As you have seen um, latest in press, um, we are working together or acquiring Silinx. So Silinx has also very interesting architecture on the FPGA side um, where they can speed up um, the CPU transactions um, a couple of times in just getting this technology added. And I think this is reflecting um, the technology um, as well as the security aspect um, to support um, the Ultra pr platform in the future. There's actually some stuff there that we're going to go a little bit further down the rabbit hole uh, in a second. I wanted to start talking with uh, David and Nicholas about their history with AMD, because I know that Ultra isn't actually the first project that you guys have worked uh, closely with AMD over. Yeah, totally. Actually, we when we were... Uh, thinking and designing Ultra initially. Uh, AMD was around the table already back then. So we discussed uh, how we're going to make that. Does it make sense? Uh, what it would bring to the gamers? Uh, and that comes back to, so to our previous history with AMD. Uh, so David and myself spent a hefty amount of time in China. Uh, as you might know, China had a ban on game console for many, many years, uh, which made it sort of... Um, free market, like, okay, it's empty right now, Who, who's going to come first? Uh, so that's where we discussed with some partners who wanted to create this company. Uh, and then we actually created a game console for the Chinese market. And as Jörg was explaining earlier, um, AMD can actually, they, you select what you want to make, to put within your, your SOC. So basically for a game console, it's going to be different than from a server. Uh, and that's what we, we discussed with AMD. Okay, how are we going to do that? And then what would be inside of it so we could actually design with AMD what should be part of the this SOC? Because as you might not know, uh, PlayStation, Xbox, so the game console, they uh, always rel relied on AMD. Because AMD is the best possible uh, chip for, for that by far. They've always been around. And if you see the latest generation, security is there, right? If you check previous generation took some time but now you're like you have the psp as you're mentioning is super secure for everything but also for the game console uh, so this is something really interesting because that translates really well to the blockchain industry uh, there is many application for psps and i guess we're gonna see more in the future with amd uh, so that's something really we are looking forward to uh, but i think amd has been always been at the forefront um, of the industry they are breaking walls. They don't really, you know, they are don't just stand there and wait. They are they are against monopoly as well. You can see they're really tackling uh, the big guys, and they know they are the big guy, right? <laughs> um, so that's something that also put us closer because that's also the, the the vision we have for Ultra. Uh, so yeah, I think also culturally speaking, uh, both company match really well, and that's probably one of the reasons we're also really uh, happy to collaborate together. Yeah. Also, um, it's funny because when we when we made the SOC for the console, the PSP was really a secret thing, um, and there was a lot of secrecy on how it worked because because it was necessary to keep it secret. And now it's been more public. But the advantage that we had when we started Ultra is like. I remember the first meetings um, that we we had after we started Ultra was like, hey, guys, can we use the PSP for, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then so, and, but now you guys are, are more vocal about it. And I think, um, I think, I think this part is going to be, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to use it eventually uh, for, for, because blockchain is here to stay. It's not necessarily cryptocurrency. It's not necessarily NFT. It's everything. It's like cryptocurrency, NFT, and other things we don't know about, and cryptography and all of that. They all work with secret keys. They all have the same problem. How do we secure it so that somebody that even has access physically to the computer cannot get access to this key, cannot copy that key? And so that's where um, you know I, I, I see, I mean, obvious obviously we, we, we saw it like very early on that this is something that will be um, that, you know, blockchain technology will rely on in the future because everybody has a CPU um, and not everybody has a hardware key. And so that's, that's what, you know, will allow um, people to get super high security without having to buy something. And so 
you can you can rely on the fact that yeah i got an amd cpu i got higher security and you know i don't need to buy anything so that's very cool uh, i think uh, for the coming years to come i think that dovetails really well with the overall perspective that ultra has for ux you know having uh, a ledger is great like they're great pieces of hardware and other uh, hardware wallets they're really good you can't expect people to use hardware wallets like that for uh, securing you know their their assets um, and having it as something which is built into the machine that you're already using is just kind of a no-brainer you know and you when you do something for mass market you always need to look at the lowest common denominator like how many people have you know this how many people have that and you know what is the barrier of entry? Well, you need special hardware. Well, that's you know it just doesn't work. Yeah. So that's um, that's you know you know something interesting to note. And it's funny because if we look at what Microsoft does, when you when you look at the requirements for Windows 11. Well, we're in the same, we're in the middle of that, right? So it is, right. yeah, you need to have a PPM like, uh, and this and that, and this is it. Like they know also the future is around, you know, secure keys and such. And yeah. so yeah. now you want to have Windows 11, you need something like that. And so I think, I think, it, you know, it's going, going to be very exciting um, for us uh, up until it won't be because it will be the norm. <laughs> so I fully like, agree. I fully agree with you, David, and um, I think specific if we're talking about off-premise um, um, systems, um, which are taking over more and more, so talking about cloud-based systems, because yeah. the people don't want to host their own systems anymore, security yeah. is, is the key, and um, this is also the point why um, my team in, in particular is also speaking with different consortiums. So I mentioned already the EEA, the other one is the um, CCC, the Confidential Compute Consortium, um, where we are sitting together um, with even competitors, of course, um, to define a standard because we all know um, blockchain is uh, is being alive to be distributed. So um, if we, develop um, a security standard, for example, which will only work um, with one um, partner, then it's not distributed anymore, right? And no. um, this is exactly also the difficulty and um, with software platforms, with consortiums um, to have a common consensus on the technology. And um, I think um, this ARM-based solution is, is a very good um, thing because everybody can use it. NVIDIA can use it. Um, Intel can use it. And we have seen this already in former times, specifically um, I'm talking about remote management capability where um, most of the vendors um, at the end um, agreed um, to an open source or to an, a common standard everybody can use because the reality is today I purchase this device and tomorrow another device. I will not only um, purchase the same device and once I want to stick it to the network, it won't work. This, this doesn't this doesn't compute over time right so and blockchain is a distributed um, network um, and we need to make sure that we are defining standards um, with our competitors with our standards where everybody can rely on and then of course on top you bake your level two three four and five to make it even better you know when people start to go around and say okay guys you know everybody has been doing it another way it's becoming a mess Let's, you know, let's work together and, and do something that we can all agree on. I feel like the, the common view of business is that it's very cutthroat. But I think that very often you find that by working together, everybody benefits. And good business is really about everybody working together and everybody benefiting. Oh. I'm, I'm actually really curious about what AMD's view of blockchain technology is internally. <laughs> that's, that's a good question. So... Um... It took um, a couple of years, um, just thinking back um, to 2015, um, to develop a strategy. And um, it's still a kind of um, a, a green plane where we still play in different angles. So, um, for example, what we have seen um, recently is distributed storage, which is another concept um, which yeah. um, is um, becoming adopted. Um, um, also, Web 3.0. Um, where you need to have hardware 
which is doing um, or are doing those transactions in a secure manner. So um, there are various fields or talking about supply chain management based systems. So more and more partners um, as well as companies um, are looking and investigating into the blockchain concept to really raise their security bar, having a distributed ledger system where they can on the fly verify where the goods are and um, getting them um, um, transferred as well as payments um, received um, at an automatic manner, um, as we call it, removing the middleman. Everything is running automatically. And I think in the supply chain, this is just the beginning. So we see it also in the medical area um, where people think about just talking about um, the current um, challenges we have with COVID-19. So um, we need to work on better mechanisms how to get diseases um, detected, right? Um, to fight against those um, diseases and um, having a distributed network where hospitals, um, for example, are working together um, on this kind of ledger-based database is a kind of essential um, part to make this happen. Another point is um, DNA storage, which is already there. So um, first we store the data. And the second point is always, we need parts of the data. And the third step is, okay, we need to change those data to, um, to fix behavior on diseases, um, to fix maybe um, problems on the human body, um, which is maybe affected to cancer in the near future and all these kinds of things. And this all requires an API, which make those transactions um, secure. And I think Blockchain is an essential part, which will really transform um, the world into this real digital age and um, in that manner. So I can make an NFT of my, uh, you know, sequest, uh, my uh, DNA, you know, and sell it. Who wants my DNA? <laughs> Be uh, careful. <laughs> yeah, on, on, honestly, I think that's a really interesting idea because right now you have the problem. No, really, you have the problem where some companies have been using uh, public information, which is, you know, the human genome and not reimbursing anybody. And blockchain is actually a wonderful technology for automatic reimbursement. And if you're talking about having access to a very large pool of DNA, which is for scientific purposes, extremely useful, being able to compensate people directly automatically through smart contracts, mwah, perfect. <laughs> It's funny because you can buy now some USB devices that can sequence your DNA, you know, like at home. So you sequence it, what? <laughs> you tokenize it, boop, <laughs> and then go ahead, you know, I'm selling it. <laughs> I think we need to be a little bit careful with DNA sequencing. So because people can <laughs> think it in a, in a different way. But if, if we're taking maybe a more practi practical um, example, like um, being a lawyer, or whatever so where you always um, search in books um, for references in your specific case so having this completely digitalized on a distributed manner would be perfect because everybody can can check on the same resource and you can make um, the system much more um, efficient in that regards and i think you can multiply this in, in various areas um, dealing um, with data just look into science if they get connected they are already good connected right but um if if you would have um, a common platform where the people can speak together at the same language with the same parameters would be um, a big benefit um, to everybody and from my point of view this is essential also to prevent mistakes to prevent trans um, translation uh, mistakes and all these kind of things and misunderstandings so um, therefore, I'm a strong believer in that technology. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next couple of years um, to get it even further developed. So I think we're kind of all on the same page here that there's a lot of bonuses for blockchain technology. Where do you think the largest impediments to wider mainstream adoption today are? I think we, we read it um, in the news, we read it in the forums, we read it in the press. Um, currently, um, the majority of people that are complaining about um, the huge amount of electricity it takes um, to run those transactions. Mm -hmm. So um, honest speaking, I love this argument and it's even funny because it's a kind of a 
déjà vu um, I experienced mid of the 90s. So um, I, I still remember an article which was published, um, I think it was 1999. And um, it was expressing the first order and shipment um, through Amazon ordered through a computer-based system with a modem device. And of course, similar as today, a couple of people came together and they did the math. And then they found out that in just putting one order on Amazon, having, um, having a big monitor, a big PC, a modem, um, will cost you a one pound um, of coal in doing the transaction and moving just two megabyte um, of data. So just one of, transaction. Exactly. So um, having this multiplied and they did exactly similar what they do with the blockchain. Oh, my God, if everybody is paying with that technology, it will blow up our ecosystem. The same article you can find 1999 um, with the same conclusion. Oh, my God, if everybody is ordering through Amazon, this will blow up our ecosystem and guys start to build up coal power plants. Otherwise, this won't happen. And um, I think this is part of the development. And this is also a part of the deja vu. We are, I would say we are currently in the stage moving from the acoustic coupler to the modem device. Yes, we know both devices are working as we know that blockchain is working, but in terms of scalability, in terms of latency, in terms of electricity, ah, it's with some caveat, right? So, um, but this is just a matter of time where the people further develop it, um, putting those modem devices into SOCs um, and not needing um, a lot of power consumption as of now. And today we are ordering maybe twice or three times through the internet, one Amazon, some food, some, some tickets from, um, from the cinema we wanna go um, tonight, for example. And this is becoming kind of normal and a big part of the population of the community can already do this and same thing is with the blockchain technology so it's not a bad technology and um, it's it's just a technology which is growing and um, from my point of view and this the history always showed take the steam engine the first one was pretty loud it was um, very um, um, intensive in pollution and all these kind of things but it got further developed and the same thing we will see with blockchain technology. We are in the early steps. We are in the first uh, percentage to run the technology where the industry sees the value, like with the internet technologies in the 90. And um, now everybody is working together to define new um, algorithms, um, switching from proof of work to proof of stake, proof of concept, other things um, to get this technology more secure, um, um, more scalable, um, having a better latency so everybody can connect it, doing transactions, whatever it will be, and um, getting it as a low cost as possible and, of course, at a low power consumption as possible. And this um, closing the cycle is also one of the biggest missions um, we are doing in the blockchain business unit um, to think about how can we speed up those acoustic coupler modem transactions to make them more efficient. Yeah, I would say I agree as well but with uh, with Steam. I think there is Steam, there is an evolution, and then you have Ultra, right? Same story. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not a Steam engine, but it's good. Uh, but yeah, I think that's something. So we saw uh, like the past few years. There is like obviously uh, lots of consumption, and as you mentioned, that's one of the the thing we looked at. Uh, I believe when we picked the technology, uh, was what can be scalable. Uh, and actually, the technology has to be scalable for mass market. Uh, but if it consume, like, would they consume the entire planet? If we basically, we just would have the same transaction speed as what we have today with Ultra using another technology. So I think we had to find a better alternative. Hopefully, in the upcoming days or weeks, I think we'd be able to speak more about how much does it consume in terms of, uh, of electricity. Uh, but needless to say, it's neglectable. I think we're already at the step of the not the not the the cobbler, not the, the modem, you're already at the VDSL and then fiber. So normally we are at the fiber stage, but we're good. <laughs> but the most funny thing is so far it all happens in a single thread. Okay. So 
So, you know, if you look at CPUs today, like how many threads can we have, especially on AMD CPU, like a shitload. So, um, so just imagine when we actually start computing smart contracts, not on one thread, but on all the threads, you will multiply, you know, the, our benchmarks here, we, we did where we reached like 12,000 transactions per second. And you can, and that was on a single core. On, I mean, I mean, no, this is a single thread. So on one core, two threads. So that means that we can multiply that. We can um, further integrate. You know, something that you you mentioned just um, before, and I, I think uh, Rami wants to get back to this about the Xilinx, uh, like FPGA, um, you know, hardware, which would allow us to even offload more of the computation to a specialized. Um, FPGA uh, processor. So, uh, so for those who don't know what FPGA is, like a, a CPU that is programmed to compute a specific task. And exactly. by doing so, um, it computes faster than a CPU that is, you know, designed to uh, compute a general um, amount of tasks like the classical CPUs we have um in you know in our computers actually even in our cpus there are some parts that are optimized for decoding video for doing xyz um and in some cases you can even have cpus um, or chips that are designed to um, optimize bitcoin mining and so they, they work they work they are much more energy efficient and um, faster than a classical CPU to do this particular mathematical maybe form of like a calculation. Well, here it is possible with you know the company that AMD acquired recently to further optimize our uh, transaction um, execution because we would have something that can be custom um, tuned to uh, compute this type of uh, of uh, uh, transactions I, I fully agree with you and um, so those um, field programmable gate arrays um, by by nature they are more efficient for a specific part of the workload and um, I fully agree with you and this is exactly um, what um, we will investigate is um, to offload specific fars um, parts which you can accelerate because they're always the same um, like specific um, integer calculations and um, in that regards, not only speeding them up, also to reduce the power, because um, I think this is also one of the biggest um, um, improvements if you can get down your total cost of ownership, the TCO, because that at the end is defining your system. And I think specific in our world, we live with all the challenges um, um, where we need um, or we try um, to get the carbon footprint as low as possible. We need to seek out every possibility um, to make it happen. And um, I also remember um, that time we came out with HSA, heterogeneous system architecture. This was the first step into this um, technology. But now with the chiplet, yes, we are fully flexible. So we can put an ARM chip, we can put a MIPS chip together with our graphics, um, with a specific chipset, with a specific um, CPU core. And this makes it also more reliable. It makes it more um, 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 suitable for um, the future and it is customizable. And that's really important. So um, you can not only easy exchange, you can also easy add if you need more cores um, to get more transactions happen, for example. OK, let's put um, this other um, green Lego brick um, um, to the plate and uh, make it more parallel. And that's the beauty of that architecture. And I think that's specifically important um, for the future um, to get those customizations happening, happening um, with our um, and for our partners. Personally, I, I love the technology. I'm, I'm happy to be um, part of that technology and um, having also the freedom inside the company, which I think is also not normal um, in every company where you can work with um, potential partners like Ultra. So um, because people always, and also my management is talking about 
um, okay, where's your business plan? What is the potential business behind? What is the growth? Um, how much money we can do and all these kind of things. But um, if we speak about new technologies, which can change the world, which can change the business, you always need to invest. And this is a part um, I live for. So I love to do this um, with partners. And um, being very honest, um, in the history, it most of the time it paid out and it worked. And um, I see it with Altra. The concept is growing. The platform is growing. There is business which will establish, of course, with obstacles, which is normal. Every project is having obstacles. Um, but at the end, um, it's it's running. You know, that's, that's for sure. I mean, there is many, so many applications uh, to 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 blockchain. Um, I think it's just here the the beginning, the very early stage. Uh, we're already happy to be part of this. I think. <laughs> so in the future, when we will see like ten years from now, what's what happened with blockchain, and I think everybody will be very surprised. People will be like, yeah, sure, I heard about blockchain. The beginning is Bitcoin, right? Uh, they won't. They won't have the same speech anymore. We're like, sure, I'm using it every day. I know what it is, right? <laughs> you can. Can't agree more. I mean, we will see NFT everywhere. If NFT could unlock functionality of an application, uh, it could be, you know, rewarded. It could. It will become, you know, your university diploma. I mean, it's going to be on and on and on. I, I think it's going to be everywhere, and this is where it's really great. Um, you know. To, to, to see, you know, the synergies between companies like Ultra and AMD, because we, we know we feel the potential. It's there. Like we're, it's like obvious. And we're building kind of like the fundamental building blocks to make it possible at a large scale. But exactly how it's going to be used is still a big question because we know just a part of what's possible, even though, you know, we won't necessarily have to develop more other people will find use cases and we will be like, but of course, you know, you can use an NFT for that as well. Or of course, you know, secret key can be used for this and that. And, and that's, that's kind of like, for me, the, I'm so, I'm really looking forward to see, you know, what people do with it. And then, you know, you know, see how we can work uh, with, with everybody kind of like being the glue between everybody's NFT creation and kind of create, creating like this ecosystem. The marketplace. And, uh, the marketplace, the app ecosystem, you know, somebody's mm. creating a lending thing and then your NFT mm. that is for something can be put in the lending thing. And I mean, you, you will see a lot of very interesting uh, synergies happening between companies uh, as well. Um, you mentioned it already, marketing. So I need to be extremely carefully. Um, I know um, not everybody is in the same thinking as I am, but um, I still love the Ruby feature um, from ATI times. <laughs> and um, just thinking about having this as an NFT, for example, or if you just do marketing activities. So you have a new product, you do um, a specific artwork or whatever. I don't want to tell more, but that's the future. And um, I, I see it myself in, in, in games already with skins. People are paying money um, to get something special and unique and limited. And um, it's, it's always relying supply demand, right? So if you have something favorite, there's always somebody um, who will pay for it, who want to um, store it, who want to show it to others, who want to exchange it. And I think that's a big value. Um, this is just the early beginning. So from my point of view, there is a kind of an exponential growth um, in that ecosystem where various fields um, can leverage this technology. And um, I think um, Ultra is exactly the marketplace. You are starting in that regards and combining NFTs and games is, is a real clever um, part. I think we 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 can end this conversation by saying unique is the keyword. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Ram is laughing. <laughs> yeah, I know what that means. All right, guys. Uh, Jorg, I wanted to give you a huge thanks for coming on. It's been super fun. I really enjoyed talking with you. And of course, thanks to all the Ultra fans out there. It's great to have you guys on board. And we're excited to bring you more news, insider info, and in-depth details of what we've been building why we've been building it, and how we believe that it will shape the future of gaming and digital assets. Make sure to subscribe and share this episode wide and far. See you next time, and keep it ultra chill. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Thank you, bye. everyone. Bye. Take care. Ultra.